what's up? I'm Jason, and today I want to talk about something that's a little bit more controversial than I think it really needs to be. Something that game developers and non-game developers tend to argue about and ask questions about all the time. And that thing is singletons. I want to talk about why I don't necessarily hate singletons like a lot of people might and like I used to, and some give you some examples of just where you can use them in your games, why you might actually want to use them in your games, and what the arguments against using singletons are so you can really understand why it's somewhat contentious, why people debate about whether they're great or terrible, or you know, if it's the worst thing you've ever done to your code to have a singleton, or completely fine. So that's what we'll talk about today. If you're interested in this kind of thing, make sure that you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share the video, hit the alert button, and uh, leave a comment and all of that fun stuff. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has over 30,000 classes on game development, graphic design, tech, and more. Their online classes are great for exploring new skills or to deepen already existing ones. If, for example, you're creating a 2D game, the Pixel Art Master Course created by Mislav is a great way to learn how to create pixel art for your own game. The course takes you all the way from the basics of creating pixel art in Photoshop to creating objects, shading, animations, and pretty much everything you need to make your own pixel art for your game. A premium Skillshare membership is less than $10 a month, so join over 8 million creators by simply clicking the link in the description and the first thousand people will get a free trial of a premium membership. Let's start with some of the reasons that developers tend to dislike singletons or the reasons that people say they really hate singletons. The key ones are scalability, extensibility, and testability. Now, I don't wanna just drop buzzwords on you, so let's go into the details of what these mean. Now, for scalability, imagine that you're a web developer. You're building some web page and you plan on scaling it out eventually, but for now you're just building it with some singletons in there. You know, you, a player or a person logs in and does something, it accesses some little instance of memory in that singleton and everything's working fine. Your application is good to go until suddenly you have to scale it out to a second system. Now your web app has to run on more than one web server and suddenly the data in these singletons may become disparate. It doesn't match anymore, and you can't just rely on that. Suddenly, you've got to go down to like a database or some other shared layer of data there. You can't just have a singleton in your code that's storing this stuff. And there are, of course, tons of other examples of this, not just for data storage and data manipulation, but also just for scalability. Having a single thing that you can't scale out doesn't, well, it just doesn't scale well with a large scale application. Of course, that doesn't necessarily apply to a game because, well, games run in a single instance in a sandbox. We'll talk more about that later, though. Let's go on to extensibility. Now, extensibility is really the ability to extend your application or your game. In business applications, you've got to remember that the life cycle of an application isn't going to be one or two years after its release. It's going to be something like 5, 10, 15, maybe 25 years. There's a lot of old enterprise software out there, and the better enterprise software is able to be extended and last quite a bit longer without needing a lot of extra manpower and extra work. The benefit of good extensibility on a project is that you can keep extending it and adjusting it as requirements change. That also doesn't necessarily apply so much to video games. The last one is testability. If you've got a very testable project, it probably doesn't have too many singletons, unless you can kind of work your way around that. I found that you can actually write relatively testable games with singletons. It's just much harder with enterprise software. So let's dive into some reasons that I like singletons. And then I want to go into some examples of where I still use them and where I see other people use them regularly in game development. Now, of course, there are other reasons that people don't like singletons, and if you have your own, go ahead and drop them down in a comment below. I'd love to hear it, and I'm sure everybody watching this would be interested. But I want to move on to reasons that people do like singletons, or at least the arguments that I hear from developers who really love them or are big advocates, and some of the reasons that I would say I use them as well. The first is just that they're extremely easy to use. The singleton pattern is one that you can pick up in an hour or less and relatively easily understand. Just know that there's one instance of an object, 
there's one way to get that object and if you're doing it right it'll be as simple as that now because of that any developer that you give a project to is probably going to understand the pattern and have no problem understanding how to access things and how to use them it's also very performant which is good for games because you have a single instance of a thing you have a single easy way to get to it you're not doing a lot of dereferencing and you've just got really quick access to that memory it's not a huge performance increase by any means but there are definitely ways around singletons that are much less performant that i've seen people do or traps that i guess i'd say i've seen people fall into it's not again to say that singletons are going to give you some performance boost but it's a lot harder to make big performance mistakes with them than it is with some other systems and the other thing that took me a little while to realize when i was kind of in my anti singleton days was that but most games don't really get extended indefinitely i kind of came from a period or a place of building mmo games where they, they kind of did get extended indefinitely so this kind of stuff mattered a little bit but not too much but most games and say the majority of games 95 98 percent of them they don't get extended long term and they don't necessarily need that extra extensibility so a singleton doesn't have the downside there no reason to not use it they also just generally aren't as complex with the way that they're referencing and the things that they're using it's very rare that you're going to swap out an inventory system completely in a game or you're going to swap out a player system completely in a game you may swap out a couple little subsystems but you're generally not going to do entire big things where in an enterprise environment you may swap out the entire interface like the entire ui you might go from it being a web interface to a windows interface or from a windows interface to a web one or down to something that's running on like some integrated little system so you've got to be a little bit more extensible or at least prepared to be more extensible in some cases you have kind of some forced extensibility with games that's just not the case you want to keep it as simple as possible and as performant as possible and i find that again singletons kind of make that easy to do now i don't want this video to come across as just a hey you should use singletons for everything and everything should have a global public reference available to it like an instance that is definitely not the case I want to go over a couple scenarios where I actually do like to use singletons though and just give you some example or use cases in my experience. So one would be something like a single player game. Imagine I'm building a game that I know is going to be single player. It is never going to be multiplayer. In that case, it's very likely that my player will just be a singleton. In fact, it'll probably be a singleton that lives forever and just gets its data restored or reset if I load or save a game. It's not going to be the kind of object that I want to be creating and recreating unless maybe that it's just that kind of game where the player is getting changed and replaced or something. But even in that case, I'd probably still have a player singleton and then some character objects that are children of it. They're not singletons that are getting swapped out and replaced. Imagine like I'm playing five different characters where it's like a fighting game and I'm picking my character. I still have my player that's like the actual person that's associated with them. But then now I'm going into fighting games and multiplayer games. So if I was in a multiplayer game, where would I use something like a singleton? Oh, one case would be something like maybe a local player. Maybe I've got players and I've got this network system and I'd have something like a player.local, which just gets the local instance of my player. Now that's a little bit different from our other singleton instances because there's really going to be multiple players out there and it's really just kind of a, a shortcut to a single reference. But it's used very much like a singleton in the in the real like the way that you're coding it, the way that you're you're putting the stuff together. You're still doing player dot local dot whatever, just like you would if it were a singleton, and then wrapping and hiding the networking and messaging underneath that. So, what other cases would I use it for? Well, single instances or system instances in other games, like especially in single player games, but also in multiplayer games. Some examples of those systems would be things like maybe a camera system, an audio system, or an audio manager, audio controller, whatever you want to call it, a persistent system, an NPC or entity manager, or even like a pooling system. That might be a singleton that I'm referencing to get an instance of an object. I might have like a pooling system dot instance dot get whatever and give me another object back that's not a singleton. Now again, I don't want to present singletons as some sort of magical bullet that make everything possible because they do still have the drawbacks of really tightly coupling your code. It's very easy to make mistakes where 
your code becomes a bit harder to work with because all of your singletons are tying into each other and changing state within each other and getting kind of problematic. So if you do use singletons, my biggest recommendation is to keep them very simple and very single use and single focused so that they're not some big giant thing that's doing a whole bunch of things. Don't have a game manager that's playing audio and controlling animations and controlling players and connecting to the network and managing high scores and all kinds of other things. Set up a bunch of different little systems and then loosely link those together. In fact, I would recommend linking them together with some eventing or even scriptable object systems. And I'll be talking more about that in the future. So make sure that you're subscribed and well, watching all of my videos so that you see some really cool tricks on how you can combine scriptable objects with singletons and other well, cool design patterns to make big fun games. Also, don't forget to check out Skillshare. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can start exploring your creativity. All right, thanks again for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you have more questions about singletons or just thoughts and feedback about my thoughts on this or just advice for other people that are watching, please drop them down in the comments. I'd love to hear them and I'm sure everybody else would. Also, a special thanks to everybody out on Patreon. Really appreciate it. And um, thank you again to everybody who's already subscribed and already shared the video. All right, goodbye.